Welcome everyone. Today I want to introduce David, the Cadillac counselor. Um, I love this man. I love the wisdom that he carries. And I want to ask you what might seem like a loaded question. And that is in our world today, we are seeing so much anger, so much knee jerk reaction to everything. So one thing that I've learned is that anger often comes from my needs not being met. It might come from my convictions being violated or from being devalued or shamed. It makes me feel angry and I react to that. What would you say to our world or to individuals that are living out of a lot of anger and frustration? Is that first of all, anger is normally a secondary emotion. Uh, it's not usually the first. Um, a lot of people, they come into a situation, they're already feeling some type of emotion, um, like they've been disrespected, they've been devalued, they've been whatever it is, and their response is not to sit in that, but it is to become angry and then launch out at someone else. And so what I've noticed in this is that a lot of people don't take time to process. And when I say the word process, I'm really looking at interpreting how they feel or interpret the situation. A lot of times if we just take 30 seconds to stand back and just think, like if you get that email or you see that, that social media post or whatever it is, sit back on it for the 30 seconds, process it, and then then move into, you know, not pushing capital letters and uh, 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 because they're just so angry. They're already angry at the world. They're angry at life. And this is just a situation that it's going to be spewed out to. And so for me, I believe that people can't control that. Like it's almost like a, uh, like a remote to a TV. You can't allow people to push your button. You know, if I can just push rewind and make you pause and make you play, yes, you're going to be angry because you're allowing people to control you. And so for me, anger is just a little piece of control that I have within myself, but then it leads into resentment. It leads into um, me being angry at everyone. But we can still change that. And I think a lot of times people don't know how to change those things because they've never been taught self-efficacy. And self-efficacy is the ability to change one's life, to create your own destiny for your success. And, and when people come into my office, they might say, hey, I have anger issues. I'm depressed. I have anxiety. I have substance use issues. All that's fine but we're going to give you the ability to change yourself, to then, when you get angry, I'm not gonna be there for you. I'm gonna teach you how to interpret that situation. There are some biofeedback that you can't control, like your heart rate's gonna start, your hands are gonna get, get sweaty, you're gonna, you're gonna have these feedbacks from that emotion, but it doesn't mean that your response has to be. We can put anger in the car, but it can't fuel the car. And I think that's the kind of thing that we need to, ha as people, learn how to control ourselves so that we can change our outcomes. That's why believing that I'm a victim literally takes away my internal self-management. Mm -hmm. To believe that my experiences define me, I give them power not just over my past, but over my future. So what you're saying, no matter what someone has experienced, that they hold the power to manage their internal world mm -hmm. and make decisions that will guarantee them health, wholeness, and a good future. You're correct. Wow. Guess what? I guess we are pretty powerful. Thanks so much for joining us.